Hi everyone. I want to thank the subscribers who brought this to my attention in the New York Times posted two days ago. Many people taking antidepressants discover they cannot quit. I wish I could say that I was happy that the New York Times is bringing to light some very important information. It's 2018. Prozac hit the market in 1987. Psychiatric medications have been doled out in increasing amounts every single year. And that increase correlates with the increase in diagnosable mental illness in our country. All of the information in this article in 2018 was known decades before. So, no, that this, that so many people have had their lives destroyed by these medications, children in increasing numbers put on these medications, their health, their brains being destroyed by them. I, I, it's really profoundly upsetting that that there have been so many people who have been struggling to come off these medications. They go through withdrawal. That big pharma decided we're going to call this discontinuation syndrome. A discontinuation syndrome? To fool people into believing that they're not going through withdrawal. Withdrawal, that term, is associated with addiction. These medications are highly addictive. They screw with your brain. They begin to change your organic natural brain into a synthetic chemical brain. Your neurotransmitters are beginning to operate based on the drug that you're putting into your brain. So when you take that drug out, does that natural organic brain just snap into place and start working? No, no. Your natural processes are, have been shut down. And unfortunately, there are way too many people who can't get back those natural processes. So when you come off that drug, your brain is going haywire. It no longer knows how to, you know, do that firing. Your neurotransmitters, your synapses, that are just kind of lying dormant. So an awful lot goes wrong. And there are so many people because they do not get informed consent from their doctors or their psychiatrists. They're feeling absolutely horrible, can't function, and they go back to their doctor or psychiatrist. And what are they told? Well, you shouldn't have come off that medication because your mental illness is coming back. They're not told. They're going through withdrawal. And that withdrawal from these medications is, well, you can't quite describe it unless you've been there. You, you can't, there's, it is painful and it is horrific and it goes on forever. So to see this now in 2018, it's despicable. The New York Times, look, Big Pharma pays the bills of a lot of mainstream media outlets. So I'm actually surprised to see a little bit of this information come out. But it's way too late because so many people have died and have had 
their lives destroyed. So Victoria Toline would hunch over the kitchen table, steady her hands, and draw a bead of liquid from a vial with a small dropper. It was a delicate operation that had become a daily routine, extracting ever tinier doses of the antidepressant she had taken for three years, on and off, and was desperately trying to quit. Basically, that's all I have been doing, dealing with the dizziness, the confusion, the fatigue, all the symptoms of withdrawal. She's 27 years old, lives in Tacoma, Washington. It took nine months to wean herself from the drug Zoloft by taking increasingly smaller doses. I couldn't finish my college degree. She said, only now am I feeling well enough to try to re-enter society and go back to work. Do you know how many people? Millions. Millions have experienced this. Millions. It's, well, long-term use of antidepressants is surging in the United States. It's been surging ever since Prozac hit the market. And it's amazing how the American people really are, they're, they're, they're just so wanting a quick fix of every problem they have, whether personally or collectively. Oh, mass shooting? Get rid of the guns. Oh, I don't feel quite right? Take a pill. Some 15.5 million Americans have been taking the medications for at least five years. And the longer you're on these medications, the higher the dose, the harder it will be to come off them. The rate has almost doubled since 2010. Sorry for the phone. The rate has almost doubled since 2010 and more than tripled since 2000. Nearly 25 million adults like Miss Tolane, Tolene, have been on antidepressants for at least two years, a 60% increase since 2010. I'm just going to jump over some of it. You can read the entire thing, but it's not just this country. Although the United States, that's where we're exceptional. This is where we are number one. No other people in any other country has been able to beat out Americans in their prescriptions, prescriptive drugs, the prescriptive drug taking. But New Zealand's up there. Great Britain is up there. The medical profession has no good answer for people struggling to stop taking the drugs, really. Wow. These medications have been on the market since 1987. And I'm talking about the newer psychiatric medications. And you don't know how to tell people to get off them. But wait a second. They're not addictive. So how is it that you have no good answer? Because doctors, you're getting your information from your pretty looking big farmer rep who comes in your door. Someone who has no qualifications to talk about, to a doctor, to talk about what these medications do, the side effects of the medications, but this is who you're listening to. It is such a disgrace. Every doctor who does this and does not do their own research to find out what these medications are doing, they're listening to sales reps. A sales rep. How, how is that possible that this is going on? A sales rep. They want to sell you something. Do you think that they're going to be telling you honestly what that drug is going to be doing? They want to sell it. And these doctors are listening to them. Oh, my God. 
And then I'll get comments when I've said that before, I'll get comments from people. Well, doctors don't have the time. Too friggin' bad. Do no harm. You make the time. You make the time because that is your job and that is your responsibility to your patients. And if you're not doing that, you should get out of this profession. And you should get no respect at all. But this is how we roll. This is, this is what has manifested here. It is complete and utter dangerous idiocy for all doctors, professionals, everyone in this country is like bizarrely handicapped or something. <sighs> yeah, no good answer for people struggling to stop taking the drugs. No scientifically backed guidelines. No means to determine who's at highest risk. No way to tailor appropriate strategies to individuals. Some people are essentially being parked on these drugs for convenience sake, because it's difficult to tackle the issue of taking them off. And that from a professor of primary care at the University of Southampton in Britain. And he's, he says, should we really be putting so many people on antidepressants long term when we don't know if it's good for them or whether they'll be able to come off? Huh. In 2018, you're thinking about this now? Antidepressants were originally considered a short-term treatment for episodic mood problems to be taken for six to nine months. Enough to get through a crisis and no more. Now? Well, it, it, that was the original intent. But that original intent never was. It just never even manifested. In the beginning, in 1987, people were already being told, oh, you need this for life. Oh, yes, you definitely need this because you don't, you don't have that serotonin in your brain. You've got a, you have an imbalance in your brain, a chemical imbalance. The whole thing is a lie. It is an abject lie. The drugs will create the imbalance in your brain. You have circumstances in your life that are creating an awful lot of how you are feeling. And those circumstances you need to take a look at. You may need to change something in your life if you're feeling depressed. You may need to take a look at that anxiety that you feel. Why? And we also have to take a look at our culture, our society, which is so sick, it can't possibly produce mentally healthy people, emotionally healthy people, not when it's based on money and materialism. And I do believe that that's why an awful lot of, well, white women are taking antidepressants. They're the biggest percentage. Hmm. White women. What's going on? White women. You're not terribly happy. Well, it's always been long-term use. And you know, they didn't even do any long-term studies. And they didn't do any studies on two or more of these medications. And they immediately started giving people two or more of these medications without any evidence whatsoever that it was safe. Later studies suggested that maintenance therapy, longer term and often open-ended use could prevent a return of depression in some patients. But those trials 
very rarely lasted more than two years. Depression, you know, our feelings are our internal communication that something is not right. So people get on these medications and it dulls their internal communication. You don't have a chemical imbalance. Most people are put on these drugs in primary care after a very brief visit and without clear symptoms of clinical depression. Great. Usually there is improvement and often it's based on the passage of time or a placebo effect. And my heart goes out to all of these Oh my God, these people who are struggling because it is hell. The patient and doctor don't know this and give the antidepressants credit it doesn't deserve. Yes, so many studies have proven that antidepressants are ineffective. The placebo in these studies have actually been more effective. Okay, well, because the drugs in the studies, people have had side effects. The placebo, nobody's having side effects. They're taking a sugar pill. But there has been no statistically significant efficacy that Big Pharma could, could document. But they sold it anyway. And the FDA approved it because they're making, because it's money, it's money, it's money. Doctors, psychiatrists, they don't care what they're doing to this woman. Big Pharma, FDA, have no care whatsoever about the damage that they do. They just, it's money. Everything's money. And so many people never get back to who they used to be. Overall, more than 34.4 million adults took antidepressants in 2013-2014, up from 13.4 million through 1999 and 2000. Adults over 45, women and whites, are more likely to take antidepressants than younger adults, men, and minorities. But usage is increasing in older adults across the demographic spectrum. Well, in our society, the, whole, the older you get, with family destroyed, you get depressed. Then they go on these medications and they will rapidly decline. Many are dying earlier because of these medications. White women over 45 account for about one-fifth of the adult population but account for 41 percent of antidepressant users up from about 30% in 2000. Older white women account for 58% of those on antidepressants long-term. What you see is the number of long-term users just piling up year after year. Still, it's not at all clear that everyone on an open-ended prescription should come off it. Most doctors agree that a subset of users benefit from a lifetime prescription, but disagree over how large the group is. A lifetime on mind-altering drugs. Which means that that being will never, ever get to know who they were, 
what they could have been? They're just a walking synthetic drug. They become walking synthetic drugs. It warps reality, these antidepressants. It does so much damage. There is a cultural question here, which is how much depression should people have to live with when we have these treatments that give so many a better quality of life? Drugs. It's like my friend Susan, who was addicted to painkillers. Better living through pharmaceuticals, that was her motto, something like that. Really. And she was nuts. And she was a chronic liar. The cultural question should not be who should be on these drugs for their entire life. The cultural question should be what's wrong with our culture that so many people are going to drugs because they're miserable. Perhaps we need to really sit back and begin to reflect on, hey, what's wrong here? Hey, family's been destroyed. Community has been destroyed. Technology has destroyed our relational, our natural way of relating to one another. Maybe we should take a look at ourselves and try to come up with some kind of change. Maybe we should heal our relationships. Maybe we should begin to really reflect on how we're living our life. Perhaps that is what is making us miserable. No. Not a whole lot of people want to do that. Antidepressants are not, not harmless. They commonly cause emotional numbing, sexual problems like a lack of desire or erectile dysfunction, and weight gain. These medications, why do we see an explosion of obesity in our country, especially in children? Well, there's a lot of factors, but one of them a big factor, psychiatric medications. So many of them cause obesity. Uh, it, it's so bizarre to be living in a time when almost nothing is, it makes any sense. Long-term users report in interviews a creeping unease that is hard to measure. Daily pill popping leaves them doubting their own resilience. Well, it should. We've come to a place, at least in the West, where it seems every other person is depressed and, and, and on medication. You do have to wonder what that says about our culture. Thank you, Edward Shorter, a historian of psychiatry at the University of Toronto. You just said something that I feel deserves Recognition of your name. <sighs> Patients who try to stop taking the drugs often say they cannot. In a recent survey of 250 long-term users of psychiatric drugs, most commonly antidepressants, about half who wound down their prescriptions rated the withdrawal as severe. Nearly half who tried to quit could not do so because of their symptoms. In another study, 180 long-time antidepressant users. Withdrawal symptoms were, were reported by more than 130. Almost half said they felt addicted to antidepressants. You didn't feel it. You are addicted. Many were critical of the lack of information given by prescribers with regard to withdrawal. And many also expressed disappointment or frustration with the lack of support available in managing withdrawal. So we have had mainstream media who 
in the beginning, oh, the miracle cure, Prozac, and how wonderful these drugs were. Mainstream media was the number one seller for Big Pharma of these drugs. Hey, commercials with a purple pill. And people who are, well, they have bathtubs outside and they're just lying in them. And you see them depressed in them. And then 30 seconds later, they're all happy. And then they report a whole list of side effects, including death. And people don't, that doesn't register in people's minds. No, they go off to their doctor and say, hey, put me on whatever. <sighs> but doctors and psychiatrists, they are such incredible liars. And informed consent, wow, did that go out the window. You don't get informed consent. It was truly the biggest shock I think I've ever experienced when my career was destroyed, my health was destroyed, I had a stroke, I, 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 and I've never come back. The me I used to be is gone. My sleep, I used to sleep beautifully. On these medications, I've not been able to sleep now, the frequencies and everything, but my God, the tr the it, it's tragic. I mean, I look at what happened to me objectively and I go, my God, it's tragic. And then to learn that hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have experienced the same. And this is a tragedy so huge, but you don't ever get that kind of, there's no affect in anybody to recognize how tragic this is and how wrong it is. They just lie to you repeatedly. And you don't realize that once on these medications, you lose control over your life. You still think you have control, but you've lost control. And suddenly, you allow somebody else to define who you are, and they then are, your own experience is no longer your experience. You just, you allow somebody else to tell you what your experience is. And that did happen to me. And I was somebody who I questioned authority. And I did not like people telling me, you know, what I was feeling. You know, my experience was my experience. And I was still on that road of really doing a lot of work and trying to get to know who I was. Those medications stopped all that. And I did not realize how warped my reality was until years later, because it took so many years to get off those medications. I look back at that experience and I'm still, it literally changed my life permanently for the worse. And the support you need, it's not there. It's not there because mainstream media has done a wonderful job with all of these people who think that these medications are safe. You try to get them to do the research to find out that they're not, they're really not. They lead to so many problems it's like every problem that we have. We just can't get people to do any kind of research to find out the truth. So when people are trying to get off these medications, so many are just completely alone in doing it. And to go through 
a withdrawal from these medications alone. You have no support. It is, it is one hell of a trip. Drug maker Eli Lilly declined to say how common withdrawal symptoms are. Nausea, brain zaps. Wow, brain zaps. It's a side effect of many of the medications. You feel like you have electric currents going through your brain. At a 1997 conference in Phoenix, sponsored by drug maker Eli Lilly, a panel of academic psychiatrists produced a lengthy report detailing the symptoms like balance problems, <laughs> insomnia, and anxiety that went away when the pills were restarted. And unfortunately, my video that I posted on my personal experience with Effexor, I can't find it. But it was, there are some medications you should not ever abruptly stop taking any of these medications. Effexor, Paxil, and I'm sure there are others, but those drugs, you abruptly stop taking them, you could die. You could have a stroke. Are you given that informed consent? No. No. That's why doctors are now a hazard. I'll link below to this article. Um, I, I can't even say good for you, New York Times. I can't. And this is a joke. And you could have done more research and listed and interviewed psychiatrists like Dr. Peter Brigham, who has been at the forefront trying so hard to reach people about how dangerous all of these psychiatric medications. You are taking mind-altering drugs. It does not matter that you're getting a prescription for it. They're drug dealers. Doctors and psychiatrists are drug dealers in a suit, in a white coat. That's all they are. You're taking drugs. You're putting your children on drugs. Dangerous drugs. And frankly, they'd be better off snorting a line of cocaine or taking some speed that they get from the streets because, yeah, these psychiatric medications are so filled with so many synthetic chemicals that they're far more toxic than your ordinary street drugs. I'm not saying go get street drugs. But today, so many of the street drugs now are tainted with other things. Yeah, it's a toxic world that we're living in. My heart goes out to this woman. Couldn't finish college. You know, this mental illness thing, psychiatrists are voting, voting. They vote. There's no test. There's no biological cause. There's no chemical imbalance. They vote. They put up their hands and say, okay, that's a mental illness. You know, you have these small groups sitting on the uh, revision committees of the uh, DSM, the Diagnostic statistical manual. There's no statistics in it. Okay. But that's the Bible of psychiatry. And that's what not only the United States works off of, but so many countries use the DSM. And it's filled with crap. Mental illness 
They don't even know. They don't even, they, they, they can't even locate anything within the person, like a gene, a schizophrenic gene. That has not been located. And thank God there are a few, but it's so unbelievably, boy, are we like walking the low road. So many. So many just ignore the environment in which children are growing up in. We'll forget about that. We won't go there. Just when you become an adult, you'll be diagnosed with a mental illness. And what's really going on is your past is still operating within you. The past is very powerful. So when people say, oh, you know, just let go of it. Oh, you're so like, you know, no, you can't let go of it because it's still operating within you. It is incredibly powerful. And if you're not going to do that work to recognize how that past is absolutely informing your present, you'll get on drugs. You won't even understand what's happening to you. So much depression and anxiety and um, uh, a lot of what they consider to be disorders, psychiatric disorders, relates to childhood, relates to trauma, relates to dysfunction. And that, to me, it's remarkable that <laughs> that never seems to come into play. Well, it's the number one factor of why this country is so screwed up and why the individual is so screwed up. You deny that, we'll get nowhere. Nowhere. The sickness will simply just continue. This sick society. Boy, that, that that seems to be still the taboo parenting. Can't bring that up. No. Nope. So many parents just screw up their children. And then a lot of parents love it when they get diagnosed with a mental illness because it absolves them of responsibility. Yeah, we have a very screwed up society. <laughs>